I'm Maddie. I work at the University of California, Berkeley, um, at the Berkeley Institute of Data Science. That's the BIDS there down at the bottom of the slide. And I'm a full-time NumPy developer. Um, my work is sponsored by a two-year grant from the Sloan and Moore Foundations. And uh, the, the grant was to uh, improve and support NumPy. And uh, the grant uh, sponsors three people to be working full-time on NumPy. So I feel very lucky to be able to do this. Um, I moved to Israel about 40 years ago, started a kibbutz down in the Arava, and this whole kibbutz thing and community is still very strong in me. Um, my, the, the way I got into this whole NumPy story was through PyPy. Um, people who don't know what PyPy is, tomorrow morning there's a lecture about PyPy. Uh, but uh, I, I was one of the main people who developed the NumPy Pi, NumPy replacement inside PyPy, and also helped a lot with the CPy extension. Um, uh, layer that now allows PyPy to use all the C API uh, interfaces of, of Python. And as I said, I'm halfway through a, a two-year contract to work on NumPy through the University of California, Berkeley. So I feel very lucky to be able to, to do this full time. It hit me at the right spot in my career. I heard about this uh, contract that they were put, that they uh, published to, for people to work on NumPy. As I said, I'm one of three people. Um, it turns out there's very few people who are getting paid to work on open source. Uh, so this is kind of a, a different thing. Um, CPython itself has only three, if you take all the hours of all the people who are being paid to work on CPython all together, it's also about three uh, full misrot. How do you say misrot in English? I don't know. But position, three full positions. Um, and so uh, this is kind of unique that NumPy is getting this boost to uh, move it forward. Um, so yes, indeed, I'm getting paid to work on open source, but there's a lot of things other than money. Uh, for those of you who do work on open source, you know this uh, yourselves. Um, it makes my work more varied. It enables me to give back to the community. We all use a lot of open source, and this is a way that we can uh, help the, the larger community uh, improve its, its code. And believe it or not, it makes me a better programmer. I don't know how many of you actually have code reviews on your code, but I can guarantee you that every line of code that I, that I commit into NumPy, and I'm moving way up there now in the ranks of people who committed to NumPy because I'm working on it all day, every day, every line of code gets reviewed by, well, usually by the volunteers in the project, and uh, it's definitely making me a better programmer. Um, you too can, if, you're, if it hits you at the right time in your career, you can look at a way to be paid to do open source. Uh, you could do it through the way I did it, which is to join one of the established groups, um, whether it's open collectives or do a Google Summer of Code or the Google Season of Documents. Uh, Django has a fellows program that they sponsor fellows to work on Django for a period of time. Um, NumPy, if you're interested, talk to me. We still have some money in the, in the grant, and if you can work at the University of California, Berkeley, maybe you, you, could, uh, you could join us. Um, another way that you can work on open source is to uh, work for a company that has a declared policy of supporting open source in, in a very open and, and, uh, and clear way. Quansight, which is the company that Travis Oliphant started after he left Enthought, and then he left Anaconda. Now he started a third company uh, called Quansight. Travis was the original originator of uh, NumPy and SciPy, and uh, his company has two arms. One is uh, doing for-profit work for, uh, be, uh, for um, the financial sector, and another arm is doing open source work. Um, Anaconda itself does a lot of open source work, or you can work for a company like Red Hat or other companies that have a policy of of uh, supporting open source in a very open way. Um, something else you might be able to do, and you don't even have to tell other people about it, is just negotiate with your employer and say, hey, you know, nobody knows what I do anyway. Um, just give me a couple hours a week, a day a week to work on open source. Nobody will even notice. And nobody has to know about it if it's just between you and your manager. Um, and then there are individual paths if you're, if you're really brave you can try to uh, support yourself on Patreon or Twitch or other, um, o other open platforms. But uh, you didn't come to hear me talk about open source. That's a whole other lecture. Let's talk about NumPy. So the grant is sponsoring two different um, arms of helping to develop NumPy. 
One arm is technological, of course. Uh, we've improved uh, triaging of bugs and uh, issues and uh, implemented the MapMull, this um, funny operator for matrix multiplication inside of Python. Um, uh, we've re rewritten the random module and are going to try and extend D types. And we've ex um, established a protocol, protocol called array function that I'll talk about a bit later. And the other arm of the grant is for the whole community to make a NumPy more sustainable. NumPy is about 20 years old. A lot of the code is there from the very beginning. Uh, it precedes a lot of the um, things that um, came along in Python afterwards, like classes and object-oriented programming. Um, so one of the things we'd like to do is, is to develop a model that will make NumPy more, uh, more sustain sustainable for the future. Uh, the grant also would like to en enlarge the uh, number of people who are committing to NumPy and especially their diversity. So that not everybody that commits to NumPy looks like me. And the other thing the grant is uh, supporting is, um, uh, is uh, speaking and, and trying to make NumPy a better uh, community member. So if I talk about the vision of where NumPy is going, NumPy uh, develops through a number of, of NEPs, NumPy enhancement proposals. This is just like what Python does with the Py Python enhancement proposal, the same kind of idea. These are design documents that define a certain piece of technology we want to move into NumPy. And uh, you can see those on our website. I, I don't know if, let's see if it works. Yeah, that's the NumPy roadmap site. It's uh, numpy.org. Um, slash NEPS, N-E-A-P-S. Um, you can see our roadmap there. It's uh, a living document, changed about a month ago as we hit some of our milestones and started moving on toward other ones. Okay, so along with the roadmap, our code is managed on GitHub. Um, through the GitHub uh, issues and pull request tracking, we've added labels of wish list to certain issues and uh, pull requests on, num on, the, on GitHub. And you can see all those uh, enhancements and things that we'd like to put into NumPy in the future. And then the other thing that, the, uh, that we've established in the past six months or so or a year is we've kind of clarified our, our whole model of governance of, of the, where the, project, uh, the way the project is managed. So just like Python, we, we beat them by about a uh, couple of years and established a steering council many years ago. About 20 people sit on the steering council mainly core developers, uh, also some other people, um, some uh, peop alumni of, of core developers who are still on the steering council. They decide the general, if, the, if something is contentious, they decide it. They decided to accept this grant and to sponsor my work. Um, but more, more of the actual progress and more of the talking about NumPy happens at meetings, meetups like this or at SciPy, which is another big uh, convention. Uh, and then we have meetups about three or four times a year at, at BIDS in Berkeley. Um, one of the important principles is like Python, the NumPy discussions are open to everybody except for maybe a half of a percent of the things that have to do with personnel. And we do try to operate according to a code of conduct, which is be nice and don't do anything mean. Um, we also want to mentor, uh, improve diversity, so if anyone who wants to get involved in NumPy and, uh, and feels like they don't know where to start or how to even get going with it, more than welcome to talk with me. This summer we're doing a project with a, with a group called Outreachy, which tries to bring in uh, women and people of, or who feel they've been discriminated against in the uh, software world, bring them into the software world where we've got uh, a mentee that we're working with. There's a Google Summer of Documentation for people who maybe aren't coders but know how to write. We need their help with our documentation. And of course, teaching and providing uh, vetted and reviewed resources for learning. But you guys are probably not all that interested in the community side of things. You came to hear more about technology, right? So um, about half to, to three quarters of my time, I spend triaging bugs and issues we process about 120 pull requests and 240 issues a month. Um, and so far, when I started out, we had about 280 open pull requests and 1,800 open issues. And now we're down to not that great. We've got a long way to go until we, until we close the gap. 
Um, people who feel they can help out with this, that'd be great. A lot of the issues are, are kind of deep things that people notice a certain corner of NumPy, but it doesn't quite work right. But because we don't want to break everybody else's code, we don't really want to accept that change. Uh, one of the things uh, that always comes up is uh, integer interflow or integer overflow. Uh, NumPy works like C, where Python works in a very different way. If you add two very large integers in Python, what do you get? An even bigger integer. If you do that in Python, in NumPy, what do you get? The same integer, you just get it, it's overflowed and you get the wrong, the wrong answer, wrong in some sense of wrong. So there's a lot of those issues and things that we just can't change with NumPy. So what can we change and what have we been working with? Um, over the past year, we've merged three major uh, large changes in the way things work. The first one was MATML. That was a change that went into Python 3.5, I think, that, that they, that they, that they um, finally, after a large number of years, NumPy actually convinced Python to change something and to add in this operator. Now, if you want to mat, mat mull, if you want to um, multiply two matrices or two multidimensional arrays in Python, you don't have to do np dot, np dot, dot. You can just do a, uh, and I don't even know what you would call that, kunchit, a, um, and you get matrix multiplication. Simplifies a lot of code. The other thing we just merged last week was a major refactoring of random numbers, the way the random number generator works. I'll go into that in a second. And the last one I'll talk about, about something that has been merged, is the array function protocol, which enables us to play a lot nicer with, uh, with uh, other libraries. So the random number generator, did anybody any, I, this might be an Americanism, but anybody like remember Superman from a long time ago? Faster than a speeding bullet, uh, able to jump tall buildings with a single bound. It's a bird, it's a plane. So uh, we've merged a new random number generator. It's much faster than the old Mersenne Twister, which is the same random number generator that Python uses. Um, it's able to jump. What does that mean? We aren't gonna jump buildings, right? We're gonna be jumping forward. So if you wanna have two threads that are using random numbers, you don't want the random numbers that the two threads are gonna be having to be anyhow correlated with each other. So what you'd like to do is start one random number generator and seed it so that you can have consistent results, then jump that random number generator forward, a whole number of, uh, of states, and then start your next thread with it. And now these two threads will have random numbers that are reproducible, but are not correlated and, and have no relationship to each other. So that's what we're calling jumped. Um, and it's a new feature in the, in the new random number generator. Um, whereas in the old, I don't know if I can, in the old random number generator, you do np.random.random10, and that would give you 10, uh, an array of 10 random numbers. In the new random number generator, you, you have to instantiate a generator with a certain uh, bit stream generator. So the generator, the outside generator is the one that gives you the distribution. The internal one is the one that provides the actual bit stream. So that we now have about six different methods of providing these bit streams. You can choose which one you want. There is a default that's, uh, that's uh, much faster than the uh, old Mersenne Twister one, MT1997. Um, that one is also available if you want backward compatible streams. And you can get different performances and different, uh, different variations on random number themes by using these different bit generators where the outer generator will still give you uniform numbers or, or normal gen uh, distributions or exponential distributions or the other distributions are still available. So NumPy is great, but there are all these other libraries that have adopted the NumPy API, whatever it may be, like Dask, KuPy, XTensor, XDRA. TensorFlow and PyTorch have their own implementations of NumPy, as does the new JAX, something new that Google has come up with. Arrow, which is the new uh, uh, Pandas, also has its own type of um, uh, NumPy array inside. And so the question is, how are we gonna be able to play nicely with all these other libraries? especially because um, NumPy doesn't do everything in a, in a class 
uh, as class methods. You often have to type np dot and then a method, and that method may override your CuPy or your Dask array. So we had protocols already for things like array and array wrap, which allow you to uh, preserve your subclass of an ND array across calls to you functions. We recently came up with the array u func in order to extend that a bit so that uh, subclasses that want to write their own u funks, like uh, they're the, the fast versions of, of exponent or of add or subtract, uh, could write their own versions and, they, and could be easily overridden. And so now we've est uh, established a new protocol called array function. Uh, Stefan Hoyer and others were the ones who, who uh, uh, brought this to fruition. And the idea is, is that you have this NP diagonal function that you want to call. This is this is the heart of the, the whole um, the heart of the whole idea is that you want to call NP diagonal with your own A, but that A may be an ND array and it may be a CuPy array and it may be a Dask array and it may be some other array. You don't want it internally to convert it into an ND array before uh, before doing whatever function before doing diagonal on it. So, uh, if, so the question is, how can we do this in a way that will support all these other libraries and these other libraries don't have to go and re-implement um, too much of NumPy in order to get it going? Um, so the way that you do this is you have your subclass, your subclass of ND array, and that array define that subclass defines a method array function. When you define that, then when you call this when you call this np diagonal, np diagonal will first go and look to see if your class has an array function on it. If it has that function on it, then it will call your class's version of diagonal. So the next thing you have to do after you define the array function method is you have to define your own diagonal, of course, but this gives you a way of short circuiting the numpy, um, numpy module level method call, right? Because the the method is on, on NP, so it's not on, the, uh, it's not on the class itself. And there's an implementation already in JAX, in CuPy, and in Dask to do this. Um, this will be coming out in the new version that should be available in another couple of weeks, 117. One more thing that we'd like to move forward with that hasn't yet been implemented is uh, D-type. You know, you have to specify a D-type when you specify an ND array. Um, this is one of the oldest parts of NumPy. It precedes Python in having some kind of object-oriented uh, uh, programming. Um, classes didn't exist when, we, when uh, Travis actually defined this, uh, this D-type object. And so it's very unPythonic. People would, be, would like to use D-types in order to define units, like meters or kilometers or inches, or quaternions, which are four, a tuple of four, uh, four floats or doubles, or categorical data, or to have ints with overflows, it'd be easy to do it if we had a different D-type that could just inherit from the other D-types. Can't do that today with D-types, there's no real way to inherit from them. So one of the things we're gonna be doing in the next couple months, hopefully, if we can get it together, is to uh, change the D type so that you can subclass it. We're gonna Pythonify the class so it looks more like a Python class uh, when, you, when you inherit from it. And uh, we'll enha enhance ufunks in order to know about these D types. And we're gonna make the actual C structure that reflects D types. In C it's called a PyArray descriptor. Um, it'll make, we'll make that more opaque and hide it from a lot of things like Cython that try and access its attributes, which will allow future changes uh, to be made more easily. So before you all fall asleep, these are the takeaways. Okay, these are the last two slides. Uh, first takeaways is in terms of open source, there's lots of ways to get paid to work on open source. I may be a bit of an outlier, but I'm not that far out. You guys can do it too. Um, it involves a lot of more people skills than you might imagine in terms of interacting with the internet, right? Everything that you do is out on the internet and uh, sometimes that's can be a, sometimes you can get good feedback, sometimes you get kind of random feedback. But it definitely does make you a better programmer and it also looks great on your CV.
Takeaways about NumPy itself. NumPy is like a good wine. At 20 years, we're getting older, and but we're getting better with age. We're striving to be a good player in the community. We appreciate that there are other alternatives out there. We don't want to uh, say, oh, you have to use NumPy. These other alternatives are crap. Don't use them. They all have their places. They all have their uses. And we'd like to find a way to work everyone together in a way that's win-win for, for most everybody. And uh, of course, we need your help as all, op all open source projects do. You can support NumFocus, which is our parent organization. I see a lot of people took the stickers. I brought stickers. Anybody, this sticker is actually the NumPy sticker. That's an N in there somewhere and then a multi-dimensional array. So people who took the stickers and don't know what it is, that's what it is. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, you can help us out either, you know, just start by telling us what your pain points are. If you want to get involved in uh, helping us solve issues and uh, create pull requests, that'd be great too. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. We have eight minutes for questions. A little bit of both. Um, people from those projects. So the question was, uh, how are we how are we interacting with all these other implementations of NumPy-like things and with pandas and with uh, other things? So it's like pretty much anything. I mean, if people don't, don't want to talk, then they won't talk. But people who want to talk to us, we're very willing to talk with them and try and work out a way to, uh, to create something that everybody can be happy with. The array function protocol, uh, Stefan Hoyer is actually one of the key people interfacing between Jax and TensorFlow and, uh, and NumPy. He works at Google um, in cooperation with, with Dask. The guy who, who uh, Matthew Rockland, who wrote Dask, uh, was also very involved in the array function protocol. So we'd like to interact with people and, and to, uh, yeah, to make things happen. We've had kind of a rocky relationship with pandas in the past uh, that they kind of threw stuff over the wall and said, well, that's NumPy's problem, or we weren't very communicative, but uh, I think we're gonna, if we can get the D-type refactoring in place, I think that would also very much help our interaction with pandas. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this grant has really helped NumPy to kind of move from a place where it was kind of this library, there was, kind of, there was a feeling maybe it was dying a bit, to a place where it's active, uh, we're moving forward, we're, we're trying to get things going. So hopefully after the next year when, when me and the other developers leave the project, NumPy won't just fall back into that same state. It seems there's a shift underway in the world and the way it understands open source and the way it's willing to sponsor it. Maybe, I don't know, um, that, that hopefully there'll be more of this uh, initiatives to support and uh, allow people to work on open source. I think I answered the question, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, so NumPy 2.0. We don't wanna do the Python 2, Python 3 thing. Um, we're very cautious of that. I think everyone in the community has learned a lot from that process. Um, Python 4 coming up. Well, yeah, there's discussions about what that means, whether what Python 4 actually means. Um, we have this discussion every now and then, and we, with some of the things on the wish list and on the, on the uh, mainly on the wish list, not on the roadmap, would break backward compatibility. And there's a big discussion about whether that's something that, that we can actually do. Uh, we'd rather try and find some kind of compromise or some kind of non-breaking change or some keyword that you can set or some, any other alternative other than totally breaking the API? Uh, so far, we've been successful in engineering those things. Uh, it may come a day where we have to say, no, this is too much. This is going to be Python. This is going to be NumPy too. That's one of the big questions with D-types, if we can do it in a way that won't break a lot of people's code. Um, we realize how many people depend on NumPy and don't want to cause uh, any kind of real upheaval in the community. Yeah, actually, uh, how many people depend on NumPy? Well, no, we don't have numbers. Um, we know from PyPI downloads that it's one of the top uh, 20 packages. Um, but that's, I don't know what those numbers reflect. They reflect a lot of CI, a lot of uh, churn within projects who download every day because there's no way people are downloading 50 million times a month NumPy, right? 
So a lot of those statistics are just kind of uh, CI uh, projects that are maybe two or three projects CIs who are downloading it millions of times, who knows. Um, we do know that uh, a lot of other projects depend on it. If I described, the, I had that list of 10 other projects that, that directly copy NumPy, a lot of them are successful because their interface looks enough like NumPy that people who use those projects then transfer their data into NumPy and use it in, in Python regularly. Um, I don't know, your guess is probably as, it might be as good as ours as to how many people are actually using NumPy, but the feeling is that it, it's pretty close to being one of the first things that people install when they install Python. So if Python's very popular, then NumPy is maybe half as popular. I don't know. Thanks.